In just 24 hours, an industrial hydraulic hose factory can produce hundreds of thousands of feet of hose, enough to supply thousands of construction machines and heavy-duty systems operating non-stop around the world. Behind what looks like ordinary rubber lies a punishing process defined by pressure, heat, and structural integrity. Rubber compounds are blended to proprietary formulas. Steel is braided in multiple layers to withstand extreme loads, and the entire structure is extruded and vulcanized under tightly controlled conditions. Even a minor deviation can destabilize hydraulic systems worth millions of dollars. In this video, join the Factorin as we step inside a high-speed hydraulic hose production line to decode the journey behind the pressure-carrying arteries of the modern industrial world. At first glance, a hydraulic hose looks like nothing more than a simple black rubber tube. But behind it lies a massive global industry. The hydraulic hose market generates over USD 40 billion each year with more than 1 billion feet of hose put into operation worldwide, quietly supporting everything from construction machinery to aerospace and defense. What many people don't realize is that modern hydraulic hoses are not made of rubber alone. Inside is a multi-layer, reinforced structure, combining engineered rubber with steel or high-strength fibers designed to operate under extreme pressure. To withstand these demanding conditions, Every structural layer inside a hydraulic hose is formed in a precise and carefully controlled sequence. And to understand how a component that appears so simple can carry the full pressure of an entire hydraulic system, its story begins at the very first stages of the industrial production line. Before a hydraulic hose can operate under high pressure and withstand continuous use in harsh environments, all of its key properties are shaped right from the initial block of raw material. At this stage, rubber is not processed in a conventional way. Instead, it is fed into a powerful mechanical mixing system where compression, shear forces, and friction are tightly controlled to create the material foundation of the entire hydraulic hose. Rather than using enclosed mixing chambers, the engineered rubber compound is worked directly on an open industrial twin-screw mixing mill. The base rubber enters the machine in a raw state and quickly comes into contact with two metal rolls rotating in opposite directions. This motion generates intense compression, strong shear forces, and continuous friction, gradually softening the rubber and preparing it to absorb additional components. During operation, carbon black, Plasticizing oils and technical additives are introduced directly into the moving rubber mass on the rolls. The twin screws do more than push the material forward. They repeatedly tear, fold, and compress the rubber, allowing additives to disperse uniformly throughout the material structure. This mechanism is what fundamentally distinguishes the process from a conventional conveyor system. As the material is not only transported, but simultaneously and thoroughly compounded. Once the rubber compound reaches the required level of uniformity, the material is calendared into flat sheets to stabilize its structure and precisely control thickness. At this point, the rubber is still hot, soft, and highly tacky, causing it to adhere firmly to the surface of the metal rolls throughout the calendaring process. This condition is ideal for forming a smooth, flat surface but it also places high technical demands on the subsequent handling stage. The next operation is stripping the rubber sheet from the calendar rolls. The objective is not to shape the product, but to remove the material from the rolling system without altering the mechanical state that has already been established. If the stripping force is not properly controlled, the rubber sheet can undergo microscopic stretching in either the longitudinal or transverse direction, variations that are invisible to the naked eye, but can later compromise material uniformity. For this reason, operators must tightly control the peel angle, pulling force and stripping speed to ensure the sheet separates from the rolls smoothly, continuously, and remains perfectly flat. Immediately after removal, the rubber sheet is cut to standardized widths or lengths. This cutting step is not only for ease of storage, but also to standardize material mass and dimensions, ensuring that each batch fed into subsequent production stages has nearly identical properties. 
The timing of the cut is carefully chosen. The rubber must be cool enough to retain a stable shape, yet still soft enough to produce clean edges without cracking or tearing, uh, defects that could later become structural weak points during service. With stripping and cutting complete, the rubber exists as a flat sheet that is stable both geometrically and mechanically, ready for the next processing stages in the hydraulic hose manufacturing process. After the initial material processing stages, the rubber has reached a stable state in both structure and material properties, but it still does not yet have the form of a functional product. From this prepared material base, the formation of the hydraulic hose core officially begins. The rubber is fed into an extrusion machine, where it is heated under controlled conditions and continuously forced through a circular forming die. Under the combined action of pressure and screw motion, the rubber transitions into a stable plastic state, soft enough to be shaped continuously without disrupting the structure established earlier. The result is a long, continuous, hollow tube that remains flexible but already possesses precise geometric dimensions. This layer is known as the hose core, the component that comes into direct contact with hydraulic fluid throughout the hose's service life. Positioned at the center of the system, the core must provide absolute sealing integrity with a smooth and stable inner surface to minimize flow friction and reduce long-term material degradation. Inner diameter and wall thickness are continuously monitored during extrusion, as these parameters directly affect pressure retention and flow stability. Once the hose core has stabilized its shape, the steel reinforcement stage begins. This is the most critical transition where a soft rubber tube is transformed into a hydraulic hose capable of handling real operating pressure. If the core serves only as a fluid pathway, it is the steel reinforcement that actually controls and contains the pressure within the system. The hose core is fed into a steel wrapping or braiding machine, where high tensile steel wires are applied around the tube at a precisely calculated angle. This winding angle determines how the hose responds as pressure rises tight enough to prevent radial expansion, yet balanced enough to maintain flexibility during bending and service. Even minor deviations in this angle can completely alter the hose's mechanical behavior. On modern industrial lines, steel reinforcement is applied continuously, typically at speeds ranging from 100 to 300 feet per minute. At this rate, a single braiding machine can produce thousands of feet of reinforced hose per shift, making this step a major driver of overall factory throughput. However, high speed is only meaningful if wire tension is precisely controlled. Excessive tension can deform the rubber core, while insufficient tension prevents the steel from fully carrying the load when pressure increases. When steel reinforcement is complete, the hydraulic hose has formed a fully developed load-bearing structure. Internal pressure no longer acts directly on the rubber, Instead, it is redistributed as tensile force across the surrounding steel. Network, a foundation that allows the hose to operate reliably in the most demanding hydraulic systems. After the steel reinforcement is completed, the hydraulic hose is covered with an outer rubber layer that protects the entire structure. This rubber layer is not designed to carry pressure. Instead, its role is to resist abrasion, oil exposure, weathering, and mechanical impacts during installation and operation. The hose passes through a continuous covering system where engineered rubber is evenly applied around the reinforced core. The material must be soft enough to conform tightly to the steel layers while still maintaining geometric stability. Line speed and extrusion pressure are synchronized to ensure uniform jacket thickness along the entire length of the hose. At this stage, the hose has reached its final shape but the material layers are not yet permanently bonded. The outer rubber jacket serves as the final protective barrier, playing a decisive role in the durability and service life of the hydraulic hose under harsh working conditions. During the vulcanization stage, the hydraulic hose is placed into a heated chamber to permanently lock in its entire structure. For common rubber types such as NBR or HNBR, Vulcanization temperatures typically range from 285 to 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 140 to 160 degrees Celsius, high enough for polymer chains to form crosslinks and achieve stable elasticity. Heat is not applied abruptly,
but distributed and maintained evenly over a controlled period. This allows the entire hose cross-section, from the outer jacket to the inner core, to reach a uniform vulcanized state. If the temperature is too low, the rubber fails to achieve the required strength. If it is too high, the material can age prematurely and suffer reduced service life. Once vulcanization is complete, the rubber and steel layers are fully bonded into a unified structure. During the fitting crimping stage, the hydraulic hose transitions from a fully manufactured material product into a true working assembly. This is the point where rubber, steel reinforcement, and metal converge, and also the area subjected to the highest loads and pressure pulses throughout the operation of a hydraulic system. Before crimping, the outer rubber cover at the end of the hose is precisely stripped using specialized equipment. The purpose is to expose the internal steel reinforcement so that the fitting, once crimped, locks directly onto the load-bearing layer rather than compressing only the surface rubber. After the hose end has been prepared, the appropriate fitting is selected based on hose type, diameter, pressure rating, and the thread standard used in the system. Each fitting is engineered with a specific body geometry, insertion length, and material to withstand pressure, vibration, and the intended operating conditions. Choosing the wrong fitting, even with only slight differences in size or standard, can result in inadequate sealing or a significant reduction in service life. Once the correct fitting has been selected, the operator inserts it into the hose end and seats it to the specified insertion depth. This step ensures the fitting is properly positioned relative to the steel reinforcement layer, preventing misalignment or insufficient engagement during crimping. After preparation, the metal fitting is placed into a hydraulic crimping machine, where the crimp is applied according to a pre-calculated diameter and profile. Radial force is distributed evenly around the circumference, clamping the steel reinforcement securely between the hose body and the fitting, while the rubber layers provide sealing and stress distribution. Each hose fitting combination has its own specific crimping parameters, and even minor deviations can lead to leakage, fitting slippage, or internal structural damage. For this reason, post-crimp dimensions are always measured directly to ensure they remain within allowable limits before the assembly proceeds to testing. When this stage is completed correctly, the fitting is no longer just attached to the hose, it becomes a load-bearing component of the entire system, ready to operate reliably under high pressure and continuous duty cycles. After fitting crimping and all required inspections are completed, the hydraulic hose moves to the packaging stage. At this point, the primary objective is not to protect individual details, but to preserve the hose's shape and straightness during storage and transportation. The hose is coiled to a predetermined radius to avoid introducing residual stress into the hose wall, then bundled using straps or securing materials. The coiling and bundling process must ensure the hose is not twisted, locally kinked, or subjected to any movement that could alter the precise position of the crimped fittings. Depending on length and specification, hose bundles may be stacked or grouped into lots to facilitate handling and distribution. When leaving the packaging stage, the hydraulic hose retains the same mechanical and geometric condition established throughout the production line, ready for warehousing, transport, and subsequent installation. Before a hydraulic hose can operate under high pressure in an industrial system, its material journey begins with milky white droplets slowly seeping from the trunk of a rubber tree. This seemingly fragile liquid is, in fact, the foundation of elasticity, the core concept behind every rubber material used today. On plantations deep within tropical regions, workers carefully make precise cuts into the tree's bark. Each incision must be deep enough to reach the latex vessels, yet shallow enough to avoid damaging the wood beneath. The milky latex flows gently along the cut and drips into small collection cups attached to the trunk. The collected latex is then treated with ammonia to prevent natural coagulation and quickly transported to a processing facility. There it is concentrated, rolled into thin sheets, and dried to form raw natural rubber. However, in the context of hydraulic hoses, natural rubber serves primarily as a historical and material reference point. In environments involving oil exposure, 
high temperatures, and extreme pressure, natural rubber lacks the long-term stability required for direct use and must be replaced or combined with materials offering greater control over performance. Unlike natural rubber harvested from trees, synthetic rubber is a product of modern chemical engineering created through the polymerization of monomers such as butadiene and acrylonitrile, compounds derived from petroleum and natural gas. These monomers are extracted in petrochemical refineries and fed into reaction vessels where they bond into long polymer chains with tightly controlled structures. As a result, synthetic rubber maintains elasticity and dimensional stability under conditions that natural rubber cannot sustain over time. From synthetic rubber engineered at the molecular level, through compounding, forming, reinforcement, vulcanization, and final fitting assembly, a hydraulic hose takes shape as a multi-layer structure precisely calculated for pressure, temperature, and demanding duty cycles. Behind its simple appearance lies a tightly integrated combination of material chemistry and industrial mechanics, where even the smallest deviation can alter the safety of an entire system. If you'd like the factor and to continue exploring the processes and materials quietly powering the modern industrial world, leave a comment and suggest the topic you'd like to see next.